it was a Saturday. It was hot and stuffy, and I was in class at the university. And really, it was the last place I wanted to be, yeah. But then I had nowhere else to be, but to be in classes, I, I awaited a forum. I was so eager to attend. So this forum is a safe space for lesbian, bisexual, and queer women in Kenya to just go and have fun. And such spaces are so important because it's the only place where in a country where you can be arrested for simply looking gay, you can just go there and be yourself and no one is judging you. And so I was so excited that I even dressed up for the occasion. I mean, I got a button down shirt and I was feeling so hot and so dapper. So the whole time in class was just, <laughs> I was just doodling in my notebook, waiting for this class to end so that I can go. Uh, I was so absent-minded until the lecturer called out, you, the person seated next to the exit. And I, <laughs> I looked up and I looked around. Are you, is it me or is it someone else? Apparently it was me, yeah? And she said, come forward. Well, I, I stood up and I walked to the front. And all this time I was aware of all these eyes on me, yeah, because I really hate when attention is on me. But at this moment, I was aware everyone was looking. But it wasn't the first time, so I was cool. Like, I could make it through this. So I went and stood beside her. And the first thing she did was tilt my head backwards. Back then, I had a lip piercing. And she said, what is that on your, on your lip? Yeah? And before I could answer it, she, were, she started talking about piercings and how they could cause cancer and uh, how young people make choices without thinking about the consequences. And I'm like, it's not the first time I've been criticized because of a piercing, so I, I'm nervous at this point and I can feel myself sweating and it's hot, yeah? But I know I can, I can pull it through. But then the unexpected happens, she asks, are you a boy or a girl? And at this point, I feel myself losing composure. I'm just, I, my, my breathing is, I can't even feel myself breathe, you know. You, you, I'm struggling to breathe. And I'm torn between explaining to her my notions of gender that for me, clothes are genderless and that gender is a spectrum and People should be free in their gender expression. And I'm also afraid that she wouldn't be able to understand that. And my mind is also telling me to dash off, that taking a flight is the safest way out of this, but then I'm frozen. I can't, it's like I'm just, I've dissociated from the situation. And at this point, someone starts to giggle. Yeah, and they are mamas and it's just from afar. And she asks again, are you a boy or a girl? And she keeps repeating this question, yeah? And I really do want to answer, but then I have a lamp in my throat because I'm fighting back tears. And um, eventually I say, I'm a girl, but it comes out as a whisper because of this lamp in my throat. And I repeat, you know, she asks again, are you, what is that you said? Are you a boy or a girl? And I say, now louder, I think I shouted, I'm a girl. And someone busts out laughing, one of my classmates, and I look up and I realize it's one of my friends who's now laughing, yeah? And the entire class joins her. <laughs> and um, the lecturer asks, then why are you trying to be a man? Why are you dressed like a man? And eventually we got through class and after class there were all these people, my classmates, they were coming over and uh, some of them were like, it's a joke. Uh, one, that friend who laughed being one of them, like, don't take it too seriously, it's just a joke. You know, she's old, she's conservative, she doesn't get this, get over it. And then, some of my classmates were like, why, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you fight back? Why did you let her treat you that way? 
And really, I did not have uh, an answer to that, so I quickly made it to the next forum. The forum had, I had been excited about all day. And in this forum, people were just happy to be themselves, and people were expressing themselves, and they were talking about what they had gone through. But when it got to me, for some reason, I couldn't share this, what had happened, because it felt so small, and it felt so insignificant. I felt that people go through worse, and yeah. But later on, as I looked back, I realized that as a minority in a country that is so conservative, we are taught that silence is a skill. Silence becomes a survival skill where if you do not draw attention to yourself, then you're safe. But then, to quote my favorite author, <laughs> Audre Lorde, when we speak, we are afraid that our words will not be heard or accepted. But even when we don't speak, we are still afraid. So it's better to speak. And that's why I speak today. <laughs>